Who better to get a read on Alyssa's former UK Parliament member, now safely ensconced in the US of A, in Florida, in West Palm Beach, uh, John Brown. John, always good to have you. What's going on back in your mother country? Thank you, Neil. Well, first of all, I think the British swamp has almost successfully neutered Brexit. And you're seeing a, a, a potential rebellion happening within the Conservative Party. I was in the House of Commons for almost 15 years with David Davis, and no, I've met uh, Boris Johnson too in the House of Commons, although he joined after me. And I think, basically, as you say, the British people wanted Brexit, and Pr Prime Minister May had two absolutely Trump royal cards. The first was just to leave as the second largest contributor to the European Union. If Britain had just said, if the European is not, Union is not prepared to negotiate with, in good faith, we'll just go. And she threw that one away. She just yielded concessions all the way in with no returns. The second was what I termed the Trump card, which was with the great President Trump. Uh, she came over here. The meeting went not badly, but almost badly. And uh, we were trying to get a Canadian-style trade deal, which would have given her absolute power to negotiate with the European Union, which some call the Euro-Soviet. But uh, there we are. <laughs> uh, and uh, what she did was she didn't really flirt. Unlike Margaret Thatcher, she has no skill at flirting uh, with the male leaders. Uh, she's sort of rather like, uh, no sex, please, we're British. And what happened when Trump negotiated with her, she was cool in that meeting. Then in the front of all your cameras, she, he held her hand and she almost froze uh, as if an electric shock had gone in her instead of adding well, her well, hand well, to no, his no, and no, no, really no, warming up to his. I know are to bring the point that there was a little camaraderie there. Um, so I know you're not being sexist in your comments. But I do want to ask you about this, this idea that she was never keen on Brexit. Um, she was pragmatic, some would say practical, uh, you know, respected the will of the British people and was going to implement that, but did so from that very time grudgingly. Now it's coming back to cost her. Is it too late for her to try to dial it back? Is she looking now at, a, you know, a, a Finnish leadership? I think so. I mean, uh, I think you're right. She, she voted Remain herself. But then she pretended, and I went to her first Prime Minister's questions, and I was convinced that she was genuinely going to fight for Brexit. But what she's done is just give in on all the major issues, uh, and with no return from the, uh, from the European Union. And it's uh, emasculated Brexit, and so all the real Brexit believers are now terribly upset. And uh, that's why they're leaving. And, uh, you know, she was brutal with, uh, with Boris. He resigned before he'd written his letter of resignation. 10 Downing Street announced it. And so she's putting forward what's called the common rule book. And that means that Britain will be within the, all the endless regulations, like our bananas were not straight enough and things like that, within all these awful rules of the European Union and taxes and things like that, but sort of technically out but fatally without even a board seat, a seat on the board. So she's and got so really I think the, it's an untenable I situation. I understand where you're coming, but she's got kind of the worst of both worlds now, not in and, and certainly not out and not getting any of the benefits of either. But the White House has already given a response to her wanting to meet with the president, discuss trade and other issues. The president continues to look forward to his working visit with the prime minister and further strengthening the U.S.-U.K., special relationship. It is a special relationship, but now she's going to be in the odd position of uh, trying to get, you know, uh, a life wrap from, from the very guy she, she held in the highest of contempt. Yes, and she even criticized one of his tweets under Muslim pressure from Britain, so she's not exactly favorable. She should have put Nigel Farage as the ambassador here. <laughs> um, uh, but she isn't, and you're totally right. That's exactly sums up what the situation is. And I mean, fancy a head of state going to a country and being insulted. I mean, the mayor, the Muslim mayor of London has authorized this great balloon to go up with a naked I figure or that. near I naked figure that. of Trump. Childish. Childish. Uh, the, yeah. the, this, this is a terrible way to welcome a leader who's probably the most powerful leader in the world and I think potentially the great, one of the greatest presidents America's ever had. I mean, we're really, England's going to be really sorry for all these insults and the disparaging way in which May has really, under the cover, treated President Trump.
Well, you know, regardless of what you think of, of President Trump, if you're going to blast him for being crude and, and rude and all this, and then you have this giant toddler balloon over the, the skies of, of, of London, you're doubling down on the very thing that you supposedly hate. It, it's, it's ridiculous. Exactly. I, I totally agree with you. And it's an unprecedented way in the whole world of treating a, a leader. I mean, even Stalin treated Roosevelt and Churchill uh, with dignity. I mean, I've never known a leader of a country treated like this. And uh, she's done nothing but sit back and accept it. Yeah, we'll uh, and I think it bodes Ill for, Ill for Britain. We'll have to see whether President Trump, who is a great negotiator, uh, manages to retrieve something good out of this situation. Because it's in America's interest to keep this very special relationship, as you say, alive, and also to have trade with Britain. Britain's the second largest contributor to the European Union and has worldwide uh, trading links. And so it's to America's advantage that we get on well together and to have trade together. Yeah. It's a mutual advantage. I agree. There's a lot more common bonds than there are differences. Um, John Brown, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you very, very much.